Ain't no stopping me now, steady rocking. Watch them hate on me now, cause I'm locked in. Watch the hate on me now, cause I'm popping. I ain't stopping. And the New York Giants are the Super Bowl champions. What's going on, Giants fans? Welcome back to another episode of G Nation Inside Sports, Inside the Locker Room. Today, the New York Giants did the unthinkable. Well, at least to most sports analysts, what was unthinkable, or what I've been saying all season long and all off season since the schedule was released. Now, excuse my voice. I've been a little bit under the weather this weekend. I haven't been feeling so great, but I had to make this video. <clears throat> The New York Giants went six and one with no number one receiver, no number two receiver. Uh, drops all across the board. Daniel Jones putting the ball in the bread basket or in their hands and seven drops by the wide receivers today. OK, played a pretty strong defense, managed to come out with the win. OK, uh, despite. Of numerous bad calls by the referees despite of numerous no calls by the referees, Kayvon Thibodeau was being held virtually all game long. I saw him get clotheslined twice. I saw him get choked, headlocked. I mean, you name it, they did whatever they could to stop this man, hold this man, slow him down. He was creating pressure on every play, wreaking havoc in the backfield. No, he may not have got the sacks, but the pressures, matter the pressures make the quarterback nervous make him move early make him force throws move him out of his out of his comfort zone and that's how you create incomplete passes and interceptions okay so while he may not have the sacks the referees completely negated the call holding against Kayvon Thibodeau I counted at least seven occasions where he was held and there was a no call Daniel Jones was running slid Gave himself up, got hit up in the shoulder and head area, no flag thrown, okay? Meanwhile, Dexter Lawrence touches the guy's leg and his jersey and gets called for roughing the passer. Leonard Williams takes the man down right after the ball leaves his hand and gets called for roughing the passer. I mean, it's, it's the referees blatantly did every thing they could to try to take this game from us okay and for the daniel jones haters and the people who just want us to tank and go get a quarterback out of this upcoming draft class i don't know where you guys went to school uh, i don't know where you learned your mathematics or your arithmetics when i was coming up they called them the three r's even though that's not how it's spelled reading writing and arithmetic OK, um, but Daniel Jones has got this team six and one. Again, I repeat, no number one receiver, no number two receiver, no number three receiver. We are playing with four string receivers and practice squad receivers and guys that we just signed literally a week ago. Like, do you understand that this man is playing with guys he has no chemistry with, no history with? Hasn't had many reps with. They're just learning the playbook. He's seven weeks into his first year in this system, so he's learning the playbook. And guys are dropping passes. He is running the ball. Daniel Jones threw for over 200 yards. Daniel Jones ran for over 100 yards. Saquon Barkley had over 100 yards. almost 400 yards of offense if you count you know because i'm sure some of barclays were runs and maybe a few were catches right so that's 400 yards man how can you say dj has not earned a spot on this team as the quarterback how can you say this man has not carried this team in certain situations and drove us down the field. DJ has earned a spot to be the New York Giants quarterback. He's cool under fire. In fact, when we're down, when we're coming from behind, he has his highest QBR. He's his most accurate. Those are traits 
known as a clutch quarterback. Now, mind you, Cutcliffe vouched for three quarterbacks. Peyton Manning at of Tennessee, Eli Manning at of Ole Miss, and Daniel Jones from Duke. This guy has the traits and the qualities of the Manning boys. He was coached by the same coach. He went to the Manning Academy. He's cool under fire, his demeanor, his composure, his ability to think on the fly. Whether people want to give him his credit or not, Daniel Jones has us playing winning football. Really, it's Brian Dable, Mike Kafka, Joe Shane, Wink Martindale, OG Bobby Johnson. Of course, they guys, those guys, the coaching staff, have us in better positions to utilize our skill sets and win games, okay, and dominate in the areas that we're strong in and improve in the areas that we're weak in. Of course, all of that matters. But when you're on the field and you're in that huddle, everybody looks to the quarterback. He's the captain. He is the pilot. He is the engine driving the car. He is the one that calls the audibles, calls apart the defense, tell the line, hey, go over here, switch over here, shift this way, slide that way, protect here. He's the mic. This, this is all the quarterback. Yeah, a good center and a good running back are also surveying and relaying what they see to the quarterback as well. But for the most part, the quarterback is driving this thing. And the New York Giants are six and one, despite all odds, despite all attempts by these horrible refs. Horrible refs. Listen, I got an idea. If you start docking the refs when they make a bad call, hit that wallet, hit that bank account, put it somewhere in the contract that for a certain amount of bad calls, they lose a certain percent of the money. I guarantee you they'll be making sure that they call the plays right then. Just an idea. Right? You can find players for not wearing this or, you know, not having that. Well, you need to find the refs for making bad calls. Every year it happens. Every game it happens, especially in the playoffs. You have teams that should have went to the Super Bowl and were done dirty by poor refereeing. Start hitting that wallet. Start hitting that money. Put it in the contracts. I guarantee you there'll be extra scrutinizing the plays then to make sure that they call it right. Come on, man. This is ridiculous. Despite of every attempt made by the referees to take this game away from us, the New York Giants overcame. They stood in the game. They kept punching. They kept clawing, kept fighting, hung around, adjusted in the second half, and found a way to come away with another W. Yes, I'm back on my BS. The Giants are going 11 and 6 to the playoffs, maybe deep into the playoffs. And who knows? Maybe for Lombardi with no number one and number two or number three receiver on the field. Wandell Robinson is starting to look good. Hopefully, Kadarius Tony comes back and adds an impact. And in the draft, we get a, a good receiver. I have no faith in Galladay. But with Tony and Robinson out there, and, uh, Richie James, maybe March, Marcus Johnson can step up. Barkley and Breda in the backfield and Jones at the helm. I have no problem saying we're going 11 and 6. And I said it in the offseason. When the schedule was released, I made my picks. And you can't tell me that out of the remaining 10 games, we can't win five. We're already 6 and 1. We win five more games. We're 11 and 6. We're in the playoffs. We're sitting comfortably. But I may have sold us short. We might mess around, go 12 and 5. Who knows? Thank you for being here. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button. Share my videos on your social media platforms. Help me get to 1,500 subscribers. Leave your thoughts, comments, opinions, ideas in the comment section. I'll make sure I respond to you. And as always, G Nation, until next time, 